Did you know that your stool can tell you a lot about your health? When was the last time you actually looked in the toilet after a bowel movement? Are you aware that your stomach can hold up to 15 or 20 pounds of fecal matter? Constipation is actually the most common digestive disorder, affecting over 2.5 million Canadians, and it can be a root cause for many other health conditions, including acne and hormonal dysfunction. If you guys would like to continue receiving weekly health content, don't forget to like and subscribe. We're almost at 700 subscribers. I'm Jordana, your holistic nutritionist, and you're watching the M Health channel to learn how to nourish your body, mind, and soul. Constipation is typically defined as less than one bowel movement per day. However, ideally we would be getting up to three bowel movements per day, one after every meal. Constipation is categorized by hardening of the stool and infrequent bowel movements, but the root cause of constipation is so much more complex than that. The main issue with constipation is that we're concerned about reabsorbing the toxins that were meant to be eliminated. This can lead to many different health concerns like skin conditions, mental health disorders, estrogen dominance, and of course, other digestive complaints like Crohn's and colitis. Typically, when we think about constipation, we want to address the colon, as it is the organ that is last responsible for removing the fecal matter from the body. However, the consistency and frequency of bowel movements is related to a surplus of organs, including the mouth, the esophagus, the stomach, the pancreas, the spleen, the liver and the gallbladder, and of course, the small and large intestines. Altogether, this group of organs are called the digestive system, and constipation can begin in any one of these organs, starting with your mouth. Beginning in the mouth, as soon as you see or smell food, you might notice that you start to salivate. Saliva comes from the sebaceous glands in the mouth, and it contains a high amount of enzymes that help to break down your food and turn them into energy. Once the food goes into your mouth, your taste buds sense what kind of food we are digesting fat, protein, or carbs, and signals to the rest of the body to produce more enzymes to help break down the specific food. Chewing your food is an extremely important process, and I find that people often forget to do this one properly. The food should be a paste before it leaves your mouth. Once the food is in your stomach, your hydrochloric acid is going to churn the food, breaking it down into even smaller molecules. The hydrochloric acid is also going to reduce the pH of your stomach, which is going to kill any pathogens like bacteria or parasites that have happened to enter your stomach. It's also going to ionize minerals like magnesium, zinc, and potassium so that they can be absorbed better in the digestive tract. When the contents in your stomach reach a certain pH, the sphincter leading to the small intestines will open and the contents will leave the stomach. In the small intestine, the food will be met with bile from the gallbladder and enzymes from the pancreas. Bile has a very special job of emulsifying fats, which means that it's going to help to break down lipids and absorb fat-soluble vitamins. In the small intestine, it is also the job of the probiotics or your good bacteria to convert vitamins and send them through the intestinal wall to feed the cells. Then the stool enters the large intestine where there is more exchange of nutrients and waste and whatever the body does not use stays in the digestive tract and is sent to the colon to be eliminated. The liver also empties all toxic waste into your body through your bowels. There are five main ways the digestive process can lead to constipation. The first way is if you don't chew your food properly. If food leaves the mouth and it is not broken down, it can actually start to ferment and putrefy, leading to gas and acid reflux and feeding the bad bacteria. This way, the food will not be eliminated properly. The second reason is if the liver and the gallbladder are overwhelmed. This will prevent bile from being released properly so fats won't be broken down and will end up being stored instead of eliminated. This is also going to slow down the stool because it's going to be too hard to push out. The third reason is not having enough fiber or water. 
Fiber is gonna bind to the toxins and create bulk, and water is going to move things around in your body. The fourth reason is being deficient in magnesium or calcium, which are both related to the process of peristalsis, which essentially is just the muscular contraction of the bowels, which actually push out the fecal matter to be eliminated. The fifth reason is having a compromised microflora or having bad bacteria in the gut. The bad bacteria putrefy and ferment the food, preventing it from being broken down and feeding the cells. There is also a strong relationship between the gut and the brain. When the nervous system is in overdrive or in fight or flight, it actually prevents the digestive system from doing its job by reducing blood flow and sending that energy to facilitate the stress response. Now that you know probably more than you want to about the digestive process, let's take a look at some recommendations we can imply to help prevent constipation. But before we do that, it's important to figure out if you actually are constipated. There's an activity you can do to figure out your transit time by engaging in something called the beat test. All you need to do is eat beets and look in your stool for the first time you see them. That is your transit time. If you continue to see beets after the first time, your transit time goes until the last time that you see the beets in your stool. If you never see the beets in your stool, this may be a sign of extreme constipation and putrefied fecal matter stuck on your intestinal tract walls. The first thing we can do is ensure that we're creating a welcoming environment for our good bacteria. Our good bacteria is called our probiotics, and probiotics eat prebiotics. Prebiotics are essentially just natural foods that are high in certain fibers like inulin. Marker fruit by PASCO is designed to feed the good bacteria in your gut, so they will begin to proliferate and crowd out the bad bacteria. It is super easy to take and even comes in on the go single packs. The second remedy I would consider is taking Amara Pasco, which is a combination of herbs to stimulate bile flow and help with detox and emulsifying fats. It contains a concentrated amount of gentian, which is also known as the king of bitters, and it is one of the most effective herbs for preventing constipation and improving gallbladder function. The third recommendation would be to take a high dose of magnesium. If you are suffering with constipation, you can take magnesium before bed and you should have a bowel movement in the morning. If you find that you are still constipated, you can actually take magnesium up to bowel tolerance, which means that you will take a dose every 20 minutes until your bowels empty completely. This is a healthier alternative to laxatives as it does not create dependency in the bowels. Finally, making sure that you're getting enough sleep, reducing stress, and eliminating highly inflammatory foods like dairy, gluten, and sugar can all help with preventing constipation. By now, you're an expert in potty talk and you can actually start to apply these recommendations into your own life. If you guys have any questions, you can always link them up in the comments below. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next week on another episode of NHealth TV.